Oh my god, the neighborhood British army is about to walk by the window. I always wake up like this. You know I'm painting at home all day. You know Chris went down to Dublin. He's filming some copy stuff, so I... I'm so excited. I've been working on some new paintings. I'm focused. I've got it. I'm inspired. I'm not doing the other stuff. I've been dabbling too much. I'm spread thin. I'm like, no, oh, maybe I can, maybe I can paint and write and play music and run a business um, doing content and visuals for other people. And I'm like, no. I'm married, I have time, I have an art studio, like what am I doing? Just paint. Like, fuck you. I've been inspired by the Bennett Prize. Not necessarily to win it, because it just happened, but I didn't realize that this prize had be been created for women figurative painters. And the winner was from Tampa. I'm, I've uh, lived in St. Pete many years. And one of the finalists is from Albuquerque, and um, I was looking up the artist's work, and it's amazing. And it embodies women's experiences, the way women see things, the way it is for to be a woman. Like, oh my god, the winner from Tampa and the girl from Albuquerque, I just couldn't believe it. And my friend Jody Herrera, I didn't see her on the list, and I was like, I don't understand why she wouldn't have like won this totally, because she's amazing. I'll put her link down below. So I messaged her, and I was like, girl, do you, you should have won this thing. You, you know, you should apply next year. And she was like, like I, I did apply, and I guess they're looking for something else. So I was like, well, you should apply in two years. I, I feel like you could get it. But anyway... So, uh, so on Instagram, I'm, I'm like checking out who's like posted about it, and there was this podcaster I found named John Dalton who actually lives in Ireland. And I'm in Ireland right now. Um, he's on the west side of it, um, kind of in a more rural area called Kerry. That's the region. Um, but I guess he he travels around to to do the podcast, and he's also an artist. So he had interviewed the Bennett family um, who started the Bennett Prize, who have the Bennett Collection, and they collect women artists. Right, so he had interviews with some of the artists on there, with them, and then all these other artists. And then I was, I've just been listening to his podcast, and it's great. The only thing I think is odd about him is that, like, okay, well, he does, he collects questions from other people. I don't know if he has, like, an email list, and he's, you know, asked for, for questions for the audience to, to ask the artist, but so he'll ask the artist something and they'll go on to some big long thing that could turn into a discussion, um, but then he'll just go, all right, and then he'll move on. Like, not even like a commentary. I mean, 95% of the time, there's like no, like, oh, that's interesting, oh, how funny, like, oh, that reminds me, blah, 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 blah. and maybe he's trying to like get from question to question, but it's always just like, they could be like, and then I, you know, painted my final portrait in oil, um, skydiving out of a, an airplane with my one-legged dog, and we were doing a ritual prayer ceremony for his other three legs to grow back, and it worked, and the painting sold for a billion dollars at the Russian circus of whatever, and he'd be like, all right, and then he'd just move on to the next question. <laughs> like, if I was being interviewed by him, I'd be so just like nervous that I'm saying something incredibly stupid or something because all I'm getting is all right. But it's really fun to listen to his podcast and I hope that he keeps going. I actually made an amazing discovery listening to his podcast this morning. The Bennetts were talking and they mentioned someone uh, that they bought early on for their collection of women painters. And they were like, this Austrian painter named Xenia Hausner Let me tell you about Xenia Hausner. When 2003, 2004, I was working at the St. Pete Art Center. Now it's the Maureen Art Center, but it was the St. Pete Art Center. 
and I was working in the gift shop and uh, not a lot of traffic this one day and I'm like online looking up all these different artists and I came across Xenia Hausner and I, I thought she was a German artist but I guess she's Austrian so anyway um, I was so moved by the way she applied paint on faces and I loved the faces and I just and I loved um, the, the color and the shapes and I just thought she was like one of the greatest painters I'd ever seen my whole entire life and I filled a few pages of my sketchbook with drawings inspired by Xenia Hausner and then I lost who it was like I couldn't remember the name I would even take sketches I had done like I had a one sketch of basically of, of a painting she did um, it was a you know it was a little bit changed but I mean it was basically it it was like this this like person and then this other person leaning on them and I I would google reverse image search to see if like the painting would pop up because it was similar enough to it might trigger the the whatever and the technology to bring up the painting <laughs> um, but yeah nothing and I've typed in all sorts of different keywords like German woman artist like over the years, trying to trying to find who it's been like it's been like sixteen years. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out who this woman was. Anyway, as soon as they said the name, I was like, "Oh, that's her name! That was her name! It was Enya Hauser." So I look it up, and there's all the paintings that I've been looking for for like sixteen years. It's right there, and she's famous as hell. So I feel a little dumb, but. Thank you, Bennett family. Thank you, John Dalton, for reuniting me with Xenia's work. That was pretty crazy. So I will link her below, too. I'm going to link Xenia Hausner, John Dalton's podcast, and probably the Bennett Prize if you want to enter it um, two years from now. I think they're going to do the prize every two years. It was just established in 2018. So let me show you what I've been working on. Should I start a Patreon and just put these videos there because I feel like these videos are a good way to fo to catch up on like what I'm working on um, I'm thinking it's better to post you know final paintings but to sort of see the back end of like how it's going and developing and, and how the paintings are coming along like the videos are good for that but I'm wondering like should I just post them on YouTube or should I create a Patreon actually it's probably smart this is what I should do I should post them on YouTube but only a little bit, and then be like, watch the rest of this video on Patreon. And maybe I'll have a tier just for like, starts at a dollar, where it's like you have access to videos. I don't know. We'll see. I love intricate drapery, embellishments, little delicate details, layers of delicate details. So I've been working on my badass Florida bitch painting, and um, I felt like her Skin wasn't skin looking enough so I've been working on developing the muscles so look that's a pretty leggy leg yeah and then look at her arm look at that lace band on her arm isn't that badass the glasses I'm working on on making those like more blingy and shiny and then this whole background it's like pretty cool these drips see those like blue drips that's inspired so most of most of this drapery and beading is inspired by New Orleans, but in Flor in St. Pete, during Christmas time, they put these dripping icicles in the trees in this park downtown by the water. I don't know why it's so soothing and trippy to me, but I could just stare at those for like five hours. <laughs> They're pretty amazing. So so that's 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 happening, and I'm just. Oh, and I really love the wood detail of the the stairs. I'm slowly working on taking bits and pieces that I don't think look realistic lo enough and making them look more realistic. I got the texture of her shorts to look more like denim jeans. So, yeah, I think attention to textures is, is where I'm, I'm headed to, so it doesn't look all like this just like big cartoony flat similarity. Okay, this is so fun. I'm, I painted a skull. And this is on paper, that was on canvas. This is on a thick, I like to get these like really thick papers that can barely bend, because it's light to travel with. And I'm covering it with lace. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. I just started last night, but look how far I've gotten with all this lace since last night. So 
So, yeah, I, I woke up this morning, put on a podcast, and just started painting this skull. Um, right, again, I'm not using my good camera, just my MacBook computer um, built-in camera. I've got the light from the window. All my, my good lighting's at the studio. I don't have a cord for my card reader or my camera, so it's like just this headache to... Um, have to hook everything up. It's actually just easier to open my laptop, hit play, blah, 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 put an iMovie, edit it, and it goes up. You know what I'm saying? So, it's okay. The technology today is still better than the video technology of, like, 1925, whenever, you know, these things are invented. I don't know. Oh, my battery's slow. Okay, I'm gonna go. Thank you for watching. <sighs> Feels really good to be clear about painting. This is it. This is all I do. Two tears in a bucket. Fuck it. You are not going to believe this and the neighborhood British Army is coming right back up around the corner. like this video hit like please subscribe and leave a comment below if you would like to leave a comment below bye <laughs>